So today we're going to talk about the different draw styles that you can use in the preview pane of Daz Studio. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the GPU, the graphical processing unit, and how that affects your renders and your previews, and also how to, how to get faster renders in your preview pane. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. I post new tutorials about two or three times a week, so be sure to check back frequently for all the new content that I have, and I have lots more on the way. So one of the most common questions among Daz users, especially users that are new to Daz Studio, is how do I get faster renders? And the unfortunate truth is that quality renders take a really long time, especially if they're very complicated. Um, so the main thing that you want is you want to get the most expensive uh, graphics card that you can afford. That is the main deciding factor in how fast you're going to be able to do your renders. And while you're shopping for a graphics card, the main deciding factor that you want to look for is how many CUDA or CUDA cores uh, your, your graphics card has. So the one that I use is a GTX 1080 Ti, which is getting a little bit old. I may try to upgrade here in the next year or two, but it still serves my purpose purposes pretty well. So the 1080 Ti has 3,584 CUDA cores. Um, the current top of the line, uh, as far as the, uh, the consumer uh, graphics cards go, is the GTX 3080, uh, and that one has 8,704 uh, CUDA cores. So quite a bit few, uh, quite a few more than mine has right now, so I'd love to see how one of those handles, uh, handles uh, uh, DAS renders and how fast they can go. But um, so again, unfortunately, that's the uh, the speed of your renders. If you want to get good quality renders with high quality models, environments, and good lighting, you're gonna have to spend some money on a decent on a decent graphics card. It doesn't necessarily have to be a top of the line graphics card. You can get you know like if you didn't want to get a 3080, you can look at the 3060 or the 3070. Any one of those is going to be better than rendering from the CPU, which is going to take a long time. Your CPU is not meant for doing this kind of work, but um, uh, uh, aftermarket uh, graphics cards are meant for doing that kind of work. So that's the first thing that you should do. Second, um, I want to talk about how to get faster previews, and there are a couple of things that you can do. So I've got my um, I've got my scene set up right now. I'm using very very basic lighting, just the environment lighting. I've got an HDR HDRI dome outside. I've already got my scene set up how I want it, just a really simple one. And right now I've got it set to preview uh, in NVIDIA iRay, which is the same rendering engine that I use for my final renders. You can get very, very high quality renders that way. That's what I do all of my renders in. Um, but also above NVIDIA iRay, you see a whole host of other different views that you can use um, that you might want to use for different purposes. So as you go up the list, these use less and less processing power. So if you're setting up a scene and you find that your scene starts to load kind of slowly, you might want to try using one of the uh, one of the different drawing uh, one of the different draw styles to see if you can speed it up a little bit. For instance, if I try to pan around my scene right now, I've had this one sitting idle for a few minutes, so it's mostly rendered. Um, but as I pan around, you can see that it goes really, really slowly, and it has to re-render the image. So you can see a lot of noise in the image, a lot of all of those white dots, those are dead pixels that just haven't rendered yet. And so I've got to let it sit for a couple of minutes to do the render again. So if I'm setting up a complex scene, and this one really isn't very complex, I've got one room and one high quality model and that's all. So right now it is moving painfully slow. Um, so I would only use NVIDIA iRay if I want to check my lighting, check my angles, check like what my final image is going to look like. So above that, uh, we have cartoon shaded and texture shaded. So these are going to have a significant drop in quality, but also a significant drop in processing power. Um, from what I can tell, texture shaded and cartoon shaded are functionally identical. They just look a little bit different. So I think that's just down to personal preference. Personally, I like the way texture shaded looks a little bit better. So I'm going to switch to that. There we go. So again, a huge drop in quality. But now when I pan around, everything is fast and smooth, that's all snappy, everything works great. Uh, same thing when I use the cartoon shaded view. As I said, um, it just looks a little bit different, quite a bit different actually, but um, functionally it's identical as far as I can tell for a, for a, a, CP, for a GPU usage. 
All right, so most scenes that I set up are just fine for doing in texture shaded view. I very rarely have one where, where the quality or the uh, speed starts to drop significantly uh, with my graphics card. But we can go um, up from there, like if it starts to go kind of slow, you can go to wire texture shaded. So there, now the quality of the textures drops a little bit more, but now we can also see a wireframe. This basically shows us all of the polygons that, that are in the image. And um, this one is also good for um, checking to see if you have any really complicated geometry in your scene. A lot of times if there's an object in your scene that isn't completely necessary but has very complicated geometry, you can delete it from the scene and it'll cause things to load much faster and it will also cause your render to load faster. So for instance, if we look at these cabinets, like they're just made up of huge squares. Those are gigantic polygons, and so there aren't very many of them, so those are gonna load in really quickly. These baskets over here have a few more polygons, but still not super complex. Now, if I look at the bed, um, in order to get that realistic wrinkling on the bed sheet, they had to use a few more uh, polygons. And then if you look at my model, she is extremely complicated, like all of these polygons, especially in the hair. And most of that you can't even really see until I zoom up really closely. And now you can see how complicated that hair texture is. So she's going to be the, the, most, um, the most complex figure in the scene, which is usually the case. Generally speaking, the models are a lot more, uh, a lot higher quality and take a lot longer to render. All right, so up from that, we have smooth shaded. So when you go to smooth shaded, it's going to completely remove all of the textures. And when I use eye ray view, it actually defaults to smooth shaded view. Um, I'll show you here real quick while it's loading in. Um, so we'll give that a second to load in, but if um, when I go back to a smooth shaded view, it's just going to look like this the whole time. There we go, so there it is with the finished eye ray view, and then if I go to smooth shaded, it just stays that way. So if you have a very, very complicated scene with lots of models in it, lots of high quality, uh, high quality models, you might want to use this view. Again, it doesn't look nearly as realistic. Um, you can't really see the lighting, but just for posing your models and getting them in place, um, this would work absolutely fine for that. Um, up from that is wire shaded. And wire shaded is pretty much the same thing, but we've put that wireframe back on so you can see the, uh, so you can see the geometry of the figures. Then up from there, we have something called lit wireframe. So now we can actually see through all of our objects. So this is wireframe with no textures applied. So if I zoom in close, then you can just pass right through your object. You can see straight through everything. So you can kind of see um, the detail when I zoom out a little bit only because there are so many polygons. But again, when I zoom in there, then you can, it kind of breaks the illusion and you can see that it's just a wireframe with no textures applied. And again, this uses even fewer CPU cycles than the, than the last one did. So this one will load in a little bit faster. Again, if you have a very complicated scene, this one might be good to do. Next, we have hidden line, which this one is kind of interesting because this one saves CPU cycles by hiding objects behind one another. So if I go back to lit wireframe, um, you can see, if I zoom in really closely, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see the bed through your character if you zoom in close enough. But if I go to hidden line, now the character blocks it out. So this would be just like you would see it in real life. You know, you wouldn't be able to see through your character. Right now we can see the wireframe, but can't see anything on the other side, so it blocks that out. And this actually saves cycles because it doesn't have to render what's behind the character. It only has to render what you can see. And then down from that is wireframe, which is the same basic idea, but again, it allows us to see through our character, and it's also a little bit brighter. I'm not 100% sure of the functional difference between wireframe and lit wireframe. I think lit wireframe, it actually shows the realistic uh, lights, how they affect your character, whereas on wireframe, everything is the same brightness level. You can see it gets a lot brighter when I, when I put that on. I believe that's the difference. All right, and the very last two are two that I really never ever use, and these are the uh, solid bounding box and wire bounding box. Basically, this just creates a just a box around all of your objects, um, and there we go. So you get very strange effects with this one. See if I zoom out, like that room is just one huge box, and then everything else is just one big box. 
like there. She's kind of blending in with the beds, the bunk beds, which are one big box. And then above that, we have wire bounding box, which this just has brackets around everything that can be uh, moved or manipulated. So for our model, it's got brackets around every single posable body part on the figure. And here you can kind of tell that's where the bunk beds are. And if I pan around, you can see where the cabinet is. And this is actually um, uh, what it shows whenever you're selecting things in the scene. So if I go back to texture shaded and select my character, then you can see where that wire bounding box is. And if I was using the solid bounding box, it would basically just color in that whole thing. It would put just a big box there where your character should be. Um, I guess that could be useful if you're using a very, very complicated scene, but I've really never had a scene where it would warrant using that, that it didn't also just turn into a big jumbled mess. So I guess they're just there for the sake of completeness, but uh, yeah, if I were you, I'd probably steer away from using those. All right, and that is about all for this one. Like I said, I just wanted to go through the different uh, different draw styles and kind of explain the uh, drawbacks and the benefits of each of those. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you haven't done that yet. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. Um, I've had a couple of people post questions lately that I'm going to be answering in future videos. So if you have wanted, if you want to know how to do anything uh, specifically, be sure to let me know. I'll see about doing that in the future. And that will do us for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.